YouTube. Today we are going to be trimming some mugs and though we have the ASMR version, I thought it would be nice to have a narrated version as well for those of you who would like to know a little bit more of what's happening in the video. So first I am rolling out some balls. These are about the size of a ping pong ball. And we're going to be using these in just a second to attach the mug to the wheel head. All right, so we have our mugs. These were thrown about five days prior and they are now leather hard. I don't use bats when I am trimming because my Brent wheel has these handy dandy little lines. And so that helps me to start to get it centered as we are about to trim. So I'll just kind of eyeball it a little bit and then I'm gonna roll out these balls into a little bitty snake so that it covers a little bit more surface area. And then as you attach these, you wanna make sure that you're pushing more down onto the wheel head than you are into the pot um, to make sure that you're not gonna distort that rim. All right, now moving on to centering this, we are going to be using a little needle tool and we're just gonna scratch a line as we turn it on the wheel. So once you have that ring on the top, you'll be able to see if it's off center because there'll be a side that's a bit narrower to the rim of the pot and then a side that is a bit chunkier, fatter. Um, and so you're going to move the pot towards the side that is narrow and that will help to center. And if you don't have a needle tool or oftentimes I'm too lazy to grab my needle tool, I will just use whatever tool is in my hand. You just want to make sure that you're not going too deep because uh, you do kind of have to scratch that line off um, in a moment. So now we're going to get to trim the pot and I'm just going to double check that I have this centered and you can see this is now centered because when you look at it from the top, it's not wobbling about and we have a nice pretty line that is centered and even all the way around. So first off, I'm going to be using my loop trimming tool and I'm going to be holding it steady in my right hand by using my pointer finger on the very end of the tool while my left hand is going to be helping to keep the pot steady. And by doing that, I'm just going to be pushing downward ever so slightly enough to keep it between those balls of clay that are on the wheel head without knocking it off but also try not to push down too firmly so that you don't collapse the bottom of your pot. And we're just using pot as a general term. Uh, these will be mugs, but pot is just the general term. And no worries, if it gets a little off center, you can just stop it, push it back to where it needs to be, and firm up those little balls of clay down at the wheel head. So now I'm going to put a little rut uh, where I want my foot to be. And so that part on the outside, we're gonna be keeping this inner circle, we're gonna be taking out. And I'm gonna use the little serrated side on this open-ended tool just to take up as much clay as I can. And the reason for that rut is not only to kind of gauge where we want to trim to, but it's also going to keep the tool from slipping and ending up going all the way through that foot. As you can see, when I was trimming there, it kind of wanted to grab the clay. And because that little rut was there, it didn't end up going all the way through the foot, which is definitely not what we want. So now I'm going to use the loop tool again to just kind of smooth out the bottom. And I have been asked before, and I know that I certainly asked the question when I was beginning pottery, how do you know how much to trim? And the answer is annoyingly just practice. You'll finally get a feel for it and it'll click 
And this is just going to happen by trimming a lot of pots and honestly cutting a lot in half. By cutting your pot in half, you're going to be able to see how much you trimmed away and get that feel for it and determine whether you need to take more or if you've been trimming too thinly. And you'll be able to tell if you went too thin because when you go to put your stamp on the bottom, it's going to kind of uh, push the foot, the uh, base of your cup inward, and it's going to feel really flimsy. And so you'll know if it's too thin or you may end up just going through the bottom of your pot, which has certainly happened before and happens to the best of us. So don't be afraid but just lots and lots of practice. And then you'll kind of get that feel where you feel like there's still enough resistance, but your pot is a good weight. Now we are going to be burnishing the pot and I'm doing this with a metal kidney, and I'm just going to be using my pointer finger to help push down. Uh, and you do have to be really careful when doing this because these metal kidneys are super, super sharp. Taking the picture for this clip, uh, I literally cut myself wide open on my palm when I was uh, washing off this tool. So... If that goes to show, even when you're not using it for trimming, so imagine it on a wheel head, these things can be dangerous, but they are very useful. And I use my metal kidney mostly for burnishing. And what burnishing is, is we are going to be taking something smooth. Some people use stones, some people use metal. I've even seen people use like a metal spoon. And what it does is it compresses the clay particles together, which is going to give you a smoother surface. And so with using a stoneware clay, sometimes you can get like little bits or uh, little drag lines from the pottery trimming tools. And so by burnishing it, that's just going to take those away uh, and give it a really smooth bottom. And if you have a really rough clay with a lot of grog in it, it can oftentimes uh, be a little bit rough on the bottom and may end up scratching like a wood surface if you were to put a cup down. So burnishing can definitely help. If you have a uh, smoother clay such as porcelain, you may not really find this necessary, but it really does take the pot up a level. And now I'm just going to be taking the inside edge of my thumb just over any edges to make sure that there's no sharp bits and I can just kind of smooth out any lines that may be left. And now we get to stamp the pot. And I'm just going to smooth that out too to make sure there's no sharp little bits because they will get sharper once they are fired. And here we have our burnished pot. And of course, make sure you wipe your rim just to make sure there's no clay bits and bobs that have gotten stuck to it uh, that are going to be a hindrance later once you fire it. So this is a pot that I did and just sponged instead of burnished. And you can see there's quite a bit of like little sandy bits and you can see the trimming tools where they've hit the clay and so it's not super smooth. It will do by all means and there's certainly nothing wrong with it but when you see it in comparison with the burnished pot, I mean there's kind of no going back. <laughs> it does take a lot of extra time and so I oftentimes won't do it for things like planters, but for cups and tableware, it definitely makes a difference. So I hope you've enjoyed and thank you for watching.